I don't know about you, but me personally, I really hate integration by parts. I don't like it. I think the formula is messy. It's really easy to make a mistake with minor signs and stuff like that. I just hate integration by parts. And integration by parts is all about integrating the product of two functions together. It's the reverse of the product rule. That's what integration by parts is. So when you look at a question like this, you're integrating the products of two functions. So it's natural to think when you first see this question that this is an integration by parts question. And you could use integration by parts to do this question. However, I hate it. I hate doing integration by parts. I'm sure many of you hate doing integration by parts. And actually with this question, you don't have to do integration by parts. You can use integration by substitution to do this one. And actually in my view, it's quicker to do so. So this is my golden rule of what I do when I see an integration question. So I look at the question and I ask myself, do I have to use integration by parts to do this question, right? And hopefully the answer is no. And the way that I know it's gonna be an answer of no is that I look at it and I say, okay, do we have the product of two similar functions? Yes, we do. Like in this case here, linear times linear, they're two similar functions. And question two, is one of these functions raised to a funky power, right? So x plus two is under a square root symbol, that's raised to a power of a half. So if I have those two conditions met, two similar functions times together, one is raised to a weird power, right? U substitution and let U be the thing inside that weird power. So in this case here, let U be equal to X plus two. Other similar examples to this would be these examples here. I mean, obviously the first one is what we've just done in the question, but this here, right? So what I would do is I'd say, okay, you've got the product of two similar functions, two true functions. One is raised to a weird power. So what you'd want to do is let u be equal to cos x, okay? And then you would do an integration by substitution. Similar as well with this here. So you may be looking at this thinking, well, you could write this as the integral of 3x squared and then x squared plus 10 to a power of minus 3. And you may be thinking, oh, no, I've got to do integration by parts. But you don't have to because what you can do is realize that this function is pretty damn similar to this one. And this one's raised to a weird power. So what you want to do is you let u be equal to this thing inside here. And you'll see, because I'll go through this example now, you'll see how this actually actually works out quite nicely. So going back to the question that we had, it was this question here. I've just rewritten it in terms of a power of a half instead. So as I said, I think it's easiest and quickest to do integration by substitution because we have the product of two similar looking things. And one of these things is raised to a power of a half. So the trick with this, let u be the thing inside the power, so x plus two. And then if you're going to integrate a u function, a function in terms of u, well, we need to integrate with respect to u instead of integrating with respect to x. So the trick with this is that you need to differentiate your u, differentiate u, differentiate x plus 2 with respect to x. That's just going to be 1. So therefore, du must be equal to dx after times in both sides by dx. So now we can take our integral in this result here, and we can say that we have the integral of 2x and then u to a power of a half. And then because dx is the same as du, in this case, we have du there. Now, you're probably looking at this thinking, oh, no, you've got x times u. How are you going to integrate that with respect to u? Because usually with a lot of these questions, the x's will just cancel out with an integration by substitution question. Not in this case here. However, notice that if you take away 2 from both sides of your substitution that we started with, we get u minus 2 is equal to x. So the trick with this question or these types of questions is that you may have to go back to your substitution and plug in this here. So if we do that, we get the integral of 2 and then x, which is u minus 2, so in brackets u minus 2, and then u to a power of a half, all with respect to u. And now we've eliminated all the x's. I'm just going to bring this two to the outside there. So now we can just expand the brackets like GCSE maths. So indices, u to the power of one times u to the power of half, add powers using indices, u to the power of three over two. Here we've got two times u to the half, so two u to the half. So now then we can just do year one integration. Okay, so two on the outside. And then now we can just add one to the power, divide by the new power. So use the power of five over two this time, and then divide by the new power, divide by five over two, exactly the same as multiplying by two over five. Here we've got a power of one, add one to the power. We're going to get two u to the power of three over two. Now divide by three over two, that's the same as multiplying by two over five. So we get this there.
sorry, my bad, two over three. Sorry, I don't know why I said five. Sorry, two over three. Divide by three over two times by two over three. I've just expanded the brackets here. So four over five and then here eight over three. Okay, so we get something like this. Plus the exam haven't written any limits here. In the real question, there were limits. I'll come back to that in a minute. But what we can do now then, just plug in the substitution x plus two back instead of the use here. And so we get our final answer, four over five x plus 2 to a power of 5 over 2 and then minus 8 over 3 and then x plus 2 to the power of 3 over 2 plus c so we get that now as i said we've got limits in this question 0 to 2 so what you would just do is you just do this so now you can forget about the plus c because we don't need that anymore because now we've got limits limits from 0 to 2 i'm just going to rewrite this integral in the box here so that is our result and then just add in the limits of 0 and 2 Plug in two, plug in zero, subtract them, and then you're going to get your final answer from that. You can do that yourselves. It's indices, thirds, like GCSE maths. So you can practice that yourself. I'm not going to bother doing that, unfortunately, in this video. If you do get stuck, just let me know. I'm not going to stop students doing their favorite method. So if you like integration of parts, go ahead and do it. Me, I don't like it. So I try to avoid it. But unfortunately, in examples like this, where you have the product of two different types of functions. So like here, we've got an x squared times by a log. They're two different types of functions, yeah? You've got an exponential times a trig function. In these examples, unfortunately for me, I'm going to have to do integration by parts. There's no other way you can do these. You have to do integration by parts. 